Of all the arguments you hear from opponents of the energy transition who do not completely deny man-made climate change, this is probably one of the most common. Even if we are successful, our country only accounts for 2% of global CO2 emissions. As long as China has no interest in reducing CO2 emissions and relies primarily on coal-fired power, our efforts are pointless. In today's video, we want to take a closer look at China in terms of CO2 emissions, energy supply, and the energy transition and see how valid the argument is. Let's start by looking at some figures. China is by far the world's largest emitter of CO2 by country, with around 11.4 billion tons of CO2 in 2021, ahead of the USA with 5 billion tons. Germany is at 675 million tons, only 2% of global emissions. China, on the other hand, is almost a third. And before you start commenting on why this is all nonsense, the sources for the figures marked in square brackets are, as always, all in the video description. One reason for this is that China, with a population of 1.4 billion, is significantly larger than Germany. But also because the energy supply in China is largely based on coal, the fossil fuel with the highest CO2 emissions. China is building hundreds of new coal-fired power plants. At the same time, many less efficient old coal-fired power plants are being taken off the grid, yet the output from coal is increasing. As of 2021, almost 55% of China's primary energy demand will be covered by coal, 20% by oil, 8% by gas, 15% by renewables, and 2% by nuclear power a total of 83% from the combustion of fossil fuels. By comparison, in Germany 18% was coal, 32% oil, 27% gas, 16% renewables, 6% nuclear power, and 1% other, for a total of 77% fossil fuels. The main difference here is the higher proportion of coal in China, which is being replaced by more oil and gas in Germany. So China is not doing particularly well, but unfortunately Germany is not doing much better either. The situation is similar for per capita CO2 emissions. In 2021, this was 8.05 tons in China, virtually on a par with Germany's 8.09 tons, which is a much better benchmark. However, the trend here in China is rising, while emissions in Germany are falling. If we do not look at the CO2 emissions produced in the country, but those generated by consumed goods, these are around 15% higher in Germany, so around 9.3 tons, as we import a lot of CO2-intensive raw materials. In China, on the other hand, sometimes referred to as the factory of the world, something made in China is probably on everyone's radar. It is 10% lower, i.e. around 7.2 tons. What you have to bear in mind in all these considerations is that China is still an emerging country in terms of average prosperity even if it is developing rapidly. Therefore, the final energy demand in China will continue to rise in the coming years, while it will tend to fall in Germany. If we also consider historical CO2 emissions, which are still in the atmosphere and therefore effective, things look even worse for Western countries. Europe is responsible for 32.6% of total CO2 emissions since the beginning of industrialization, of which Germany alone accounts for 5.7%, the USA for 25.5% and China for only 13.7% of emissions, despite the large differences in population figures. I think it's a bit of an exaggeration to talk about historical debt that needs to be completely offset, but it clearly shows how much CO2 the generation of prosperity and our current standard of living has produced and why an emerging country will tend to be climate neutral later than some Western countries. But what does development look like in China? Renewable electricity generation is a key element of the energy transition. This has been increasing significantly in China since 2000, as can be seen from the annual expansion of hydro, wind power, and PV. Just to put the order of magnitude into perspective, at 125 gigawatt, the addition of PV and wind alone in 2022 was almost as large as the total installed capacity in Germany at the end of 2022. If we look at the development of the entire energy supply, 
across all sectors. In 2000, around 73% of energy still came from coal, compared to the 55% just shown in 2021. In Germany, around 25% came from coal in 2000 and 18% in 2021. The trend is similar, although of course at a different level. China has currently set 2060 as the target year for the energy transition in which net zero is to be achieved, i.e. emissions are at zero in total. The turning point in CO2 emissions is to be reached in 2030, from which point emissions will no longer increase but decrease. In terms of annual figures, this is of course not as ambitious as most industrialized nations, 2045 or 50, but if you compare it with other emerging economies such as India, which wants to be climate neutral by 2070, for example, it is well within the framework. Given current developments in China, a study by Bloomberg NEF even sees the possibility of China achieving climate neutrality 10 years earlier, i.e. by 2050. They are also currently demonstrating their ambitions in the area of mobility transition. In July 2023, the new 6B emission standard is due to come into force, which sets significantly higher standards than the Euro 6 standard currently in force in Europe and is comparable to or even stricter than the Euro 7 standard planned for 2025. In China, the combustion engine car is being displaced in new registrations by domestic electric cars in particular. In addition to the benefits of the energy transition for the climate, China has understood more than any other nation that technologies for the energy transition and the commercialization of these technologies are the key to future economic success. China now leads the world in terms of investment in the energy transition and its technologies. In 2022, China accounted for $550 billion, around half of total global spending, starting with photovoltaics, where they pushed Germany out of the market from 2010. In 2022, 87% of new PV systems in Germany came from China. Worldwide, the figure is around 75%. It is not yet as dominant in wind power, but here too China has long been one of the world leaders and was responsible for 58% of all wind turbines manufactured worldwide in 2020. The market leader in lithium-ion batteries is also a Chinese company, with over 32% of the global share CATL percent. And with an announcement this year for a new battery with extremely high energy density, it is also outshining most of its competitors in terms of technology. China also appears to be ahead in the promising new market segment of sodium-ion batteries. The market for electric vehicles is only just picking up speed worldwide, but here too, China is conquering the market. Both in China and worldwide, the share of Chinese manufacturers is increasing. China is therefore the technology leader in almost all important technologies of the energy transition or wants to become one. It is therefore not surprising that China is also currently planning large electrolysis pilot plants and wants to gain a foothold in the hydrogen sector in the future. In addition to the technologies, many of the raw materials for these technologies also come directly from China. At the same time, China is withdrawing from financing coal-fired power plants outside of China, where it was also at the forefront with over 50% of global investments until 2021 and is instead also focusing on renewables for investments outside of China. It is being sold to the outside world as a climate protection measure, which of course it is, even if it certainly makes sense from an economic perspective. It is true that one country cannot stop the climate crisis on its own. Each individual must play their part. Considering China's role in this task is complex. Until recently, it was the most populous country in the world and has a rapidly growing economy that emits a lot of CO2 and the proportion of coal used is still very high. On the other hand, China is an emerging country on its way to becoming an industrialized nation that is already showing ambitions in the right direction in many areas and is already a technology leader and market leader in many areas of the energy transition. However, it is certainly nonsense for Germans to take individual figures, such as the number of new coal-fired power plants, out of context and argue that we don't have to do anything, as our own emissions are still far too high.
For all those who argue primarily from an economic point of view, who see the future of their children as being endangered less by a climate catastrophe than by an economic downturn, it is important to take a closer look. China has long recognized that renewable energy and technologies that quickly bring us closer to climate neutrality are the future worldwide. They are necessary, but above all they are the key to future economic success. That is why China has focused on these technologies. Today, they are already the market leader in many areas and want to become one in others, too. This should give us food for thought. Holding on to technologies that will be needed less and less worldwide in the future, such as combustion engines for cars, is not only nonsense from a climate change perspective, but also for our economic future. You can find out how strong we already were in parts of this technology, and why we unfortunately no longer are, here for the PV industry and here for the wind power industry. If you like the video, leave a like now and subscribe to the channel.